everyone, welcome to episode number two of my Building Together series. Now in the last episode, you got an overview of what the series was gonna be about, plus you got to see a complete build in the Taku. Today, we turn our attention to motherboards because this is typically where I start with each build. We're gonna seat the CPUs, then explore thermal paste application patterns and load the M.2 and RAM for each board. Plus, we will do a complete build that will be a giveaway on this channel to one of my subscribers. So, very exciting, we got a lot to do. Let's get rolling. So these are the four motherboards that we're primarily gonna focus on today. These two are Intel and these are AMD. Now these specifically are Z590 boards. When you see Z590, I want you to think Intel. These also happen to be Maximus 13 boards, except this is a hero model and this one is your Extreme Glacial board. And because these are Z590, that also means that it supports Intel's latest 11th gen CPU. And actually, in the last episode, you saw this board, the Z590 iGaming motherboard. And we're gonna use this exact same board in our giveaway build at the end of this video. So quick tip, when you're on the ROG site browsing through boards, anytime you see Maximus, I want you to think Intel. Then on this side is AMD. This one is an X570 and this is a B550. This X570 is also known as the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero board. So like Maximus was to Intel, Crosshair is to AMD. So again, when you're scrolling through the ROG site, when you see Crosshair, I want you to think AMD. And the cool thing about X570 and B550 is that it supports AMD's most current generation CPU, which is the 5000 series. And there are a lot of boards out there, but for this series, we're gonna specifically focus on these. Plus, at the end, we will get a special look at this Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha. This is a TRX 40 board which means it's AMD. So first we're gonna focus on our two Z590 boards. We need our Intel CPUs. And this is where it starts to get fun. Ugh. How do you open this thing? Honestly, I think the packaging is harder to open than actually seeding the CPU. And that's what it means to install the CPU. It's called seeding the CPU. Okay, there we go. We're using the exact same CPU on each board. It's an 11900K. So for the first step, match the triangle on the lower left of the CPU with the triangle on the removable tab that's on the board. That's the orientation you need to remember. Then pop open the latch, lift the cover, gently place the CPU directly down, lower the cover, drop down the latch. It sounds a little crunchy, don't be alarmed. Cover pops off, lock the latch, and you're done. When you hold your CPU, make sure you hold it on the edges, wash your hands, you don't wanna get finger grease all over this. And when we open this hinge up, we need to make sure we're very careful. We don't wanna bend any pins. All right, let's do it again. Same CPU, match the triangles, lift the latch and cover, gently place the CPU, Lower, pop, lock, and you're done. Now it's time for the AMD CPUs. Now the pins are on the back of the CPU, not the board like Intel. So be extra careful when handling your CPU. So in the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero board, we are seeding a Ryzen 9 5950X. And it's the same idea. Match the triangle on the CPU to the one on the board. Lift the latch, gently place the CPU, Lower the latch, lock in place, voila. And on this B550 board, we are seating a Ryzen 5 3600 XT. So there are two main ways to cool your CPU, air cooled or water cooled. The goal is to take heat away from the CPU to a plate that's attached to a water block, an air cooler, or like this, an AIO, an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. The Z590s and the X570s are all going to have a water block attached to the CPU. And then the tough board, the B550, this is gonna have the AIO. Now, later on in this video, you'll actually see an air cooler because I'm attaching that to our giveaway build. Both ways will require you to apply thermal paste directly onto the CPU. And the reason being is because 
You want to make sure you have full contact when the two metal surfaces come together. So the thermal paste helps with that, but it's also very conductive, so it also facilitates with heat transfer. Now there's a variety of application patterns when it comes to thermal paste, so we're going to explore that right now. The important thing is we want full coverage because if we don't, we could have hot spots on our CPU, which could lead to random crashes and loss of performance. But before we do that, we're gonna mount the back plates that we'll need for our water blocks on our motherboards. All right, so thermal paste pattern number one, the blob, or you might hear others call it a pea-sized dot. But depending on where you buy your peas, mine might be bigger than yours. Next up, the three-line pattern, or what I like to call the jail cell. The star with a couple extra dots because I'm not convinced those lines are thick enough. Ah, the multiple dot personality pattern. The X pattern because, well, just say no, kids. The smiley face with a little too much Botox. So obviously, results are gonna vary. I don't really care what pattern you make. The important thing though is that you get full coverage. And for me, I'm always left wondering, is the paste actually covering the CPU if I put a blob in the middle, three lines? So that's why of late, I started using Thermal Grizzly Extreme and actually painting it on the CPU. With the exception of the Taku build last week, this is what I've been using since my Battle Station build. And as long as you're not glopping it on like you're frosting a cake, you just want to create a nice thin layer, you'll never have to question whether or not the thermal paste is fully covering the CPU. And now we're ready to attach the EK Quantum Magnitude CPU water block to our Crosshair 8 Dark Hero board. I also added a blue accent ring because this build is going to have a blue theme. And this beauty, the EK Quantum Velocity CPU water block, is going on to our Maximus 13 Hero board. Now the Extreme Glacial board is unique because it comes with its own integrated EK water block. So in addition to the thermal paste, we also have to add thermal pads to the back of the block, which helps take the heat away. This is my first time getting my hands on this board, and I wasn't sure if it would be hard, but the instructions are incredibly clear and the thermal pads are pre-cut. So now we're going to take a break from the CPU section and move on to storage. But I do want to mention that I did not yet mount the AIO on the B550 board. I find it's easier to mount the motherboard first, then attach this. That way you don't have a radiator dangling as you're trying to get the motherboard into the case. So next week we'll have to pull out the thermal paste one more time and slap this baby on. All right, next up is storage. Now these days, the fastest form of storage is called an SSD or a solid state drive. But not too long ago, we used to use something like this to read and write data. This is an HDD, a hard disk drive. You'd have to connect a SATA cable and a power cable like this, and it would spin around and kind of read like a record player. Then we evolved to this, a solid state drive. It uses the same connectors, but it can read a lot faster because it's not relying on a mechanical platter. And aside from it having a much smaller profile, it's also more reliable because there aren't parts that can fail, like you. But the latest evolution of an SSD is called NVMe. This goes directly into the M.2 socket on your motherboard, which you're gonna see in a second. It requires no cables and it's super fast. Now before I install the NVMe, I always double check the motherboard manual. Now for this build, we are using all Gen 4 NVMe and we are gonna put it in slot one and two. So the first step is to take the heat sink off. That's a fancy name for cover. Then you're gonna peel the plastic off the thermal pad, click the NVMe SSD into place, secure it with a screw, remove the plastic from the thermal pad on the back of the heat sink, and close it up. That's it, you're done. Slot two, the heat sink comes off, peel the plastic, click the NVMe into place. This one doesn't require an additional screw, so you're gonna peel the plastic off the back of the heat sink, pop it back on, screw it, and you're good. Now the crosshair board. We will be using slot one and two on this board too. Unscrew, click, peel, screw, done. The next slot will require us to place a standoff. Can you see the gap? 
Inside the motherboard box, pull out the little baggie of standoffs and small screws. The standoffs attach directly to the board, and now the NVMe can lay flat. You never want it flexing in any weird way. Small screw goes on, peel the plastic off the thermal pad, put the heat sink back on, you're done. So I hope this is starting to make sense. Now we're gonna work on our B550 board. We're gonna use slot one, which also is gonna require a standoff. Click in, it's nice and flat, baby screw, peel, place, done. Last up is this bad boy, which I saved to the end because we are installing a couple extra, which is going to require us to use the DIM.2 slot. Take off the heat sink, this time unscrew the two baby screws, then peel back the plastic, click, screw, repeat for slot two, and hopefully by this point you are getting the hang of this. Lastly, we're gonna install two Gen 3 NVMEs into this DIM.2 card, and installation is just like the motherboard. We need standoffs, so I grabbed those from the motherboard box, clicked everything in, peeled the plastic, and we're good to go. Now this will go directly next to our RAM. The last thing we're gonna install before we get to the giveaway build is the RAM. So unless you are in that group of people that does crazy overclocking, or you are just trying to eke out every last bit of performance, most of the RAM today is pretty decent, and you can kind of buy it based on the aesthetic, and of course, your price point. DDR4 is the most current generation DDR5 is coming shortly, which I'm excited about. The only thing though is that AMD is a bit more sensitive to the timing of RAM. So if you're doing an AMD build like here, we need to make sure that the RAM is compatible. For example, on the outside of this Trident Z Neo box, you'll see Ryzen AMD, so you know that this would work. Pretty much all the manufacturers are good with that. Now we are gonna be installing four sticks on each motherboard, and the slot that you put the RAM in is called a DIM slot. So the extra NVMe that we installed will go right next to the RAM in a DIM.2 slot. So we will be filling up all the slots, but say we were only gonna put two sticks of RAM in. This is where you have to look at your manual. For example, in this Extreme Glacial board, we would have to put it in slot A2 and B2, which is two and four. And let's say we were doing one in a mini ITX. Get your manual out, it will tell you exactly how to configure it. So the first step to installing RAM is to pop open the hinges. Now look at the bottom of the RAM. One side is slightly longer than the other, so just make sure the bottom of your RAM corresponds correctly to the opening in the DIM slot. I like to click the non-hinged side first, and you'll know your RAM is fully installed once the hinge is back in place. For this board, we're using Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB. So again, pop open the hinges. Oh, and be sure to pull off the plastic before you install your RAM. Gently place the RAM, click, click, done. And for the B550 board, in keeping with the tough theme, look at how well that matches. This is Team Group's Vulcan. And lastly, my favorite, G-Skills Trident Z Royal RAM is going on the Extreme Glacial board. And one last step, this goes right into the DIM.2 slot. So we've reached the point where I typically start to install these into the cases, or you might hear the word chassis, but that is going to be in the next episode. So I guess I should probably tell you about the giveaway PC that I built. Enjoy and watch it come together.
So I loved building this. It was so easy and it came together really fast. Hands down, my most favorite unconventional mini ITX build. This is the Motif Monument Case by Yule Beast, and I can't get over how cool this is. Plus, I wish that you could hold it because it is so solid, so heavy. Now, I had a chance a few months back to talk to the Yule Beast owners, and they are such good people, so passionate, full of ideas. And for a relatively young company, they already have four case designs which all happen to be stunning. And I think it is so important to support small boutique companies like Yule Beast, so definitely go give them some love and check out their link below. Now, as you saw, I attached this air cooler to the CPU. Aside from the Taku build in the last episode, this is my second ever air cooler and it's so easy to install. The only thing I don't like about this air cooler is that it completely covers my Z590 iGaming motherboard, but at least my CPU will be cool. And for those who have been following along in this episode, Z590 means Intel. So on this board, we have an Intel 10900K and hopefully you appreciated my meticulous thermal paste application. And because it's a 10th gen CPU, that meant I had to install my NVMe into slot number two in order for it to be recognized, which I forgot initially. I put it in slot one and then when I turned it on, it couldn't find the storage and I thought, ah! So I had to actually take everything apart to access slot number two, but fortunately it's a quick build and everything went back together in no time. And for the RAM, we have Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB, which is also somewhat hidden. And for the GPU, a 3060 Dual, which fits perfectly in this chassis. I also love that there are so few cables, so there's really nothing to get confused about. And for the 24 pin, I decided to cascade it downward, more like a ribbon. You could snake it to the back, pull it down towards the power supply like I've seen a lot of people do, but I'm really digging this look and I appreciate the pop of color in this very dark, stealthy build. Now the stock cables that come with this Corsair SF750 are actually not long enough, so the cable mod cables worked out great despite being a little bit long. I did some finagling and I'm happy with this end result. So as I mentioned, this is a giveaway and it really is but I haven't yet figured out the requirements. I don't really want you to have to fill out forms and then I have to deal with spam bots. And I want this to be meaningful. So all I ask is that you subscribe to my channel and follow along in this series. And in the upcoming episodes, I will give you more info. And you're gonna wanna tune into episode number three because we're gonna look at our cases install the four motherboards that we worked on today and start with the cabling. We are also going to complete the tough gaming build, which is for the summer ASUS PC DIY campaign. So you definitely don't want to miss out. So to learn more, go to the link right here and make sure you get involved. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.